That opinion will please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. Therefore, honourable members, I call on private and local order of the day number three. Rickerton Bush Amendment Bill first reading. Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Minister, Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, I move that the Rickerton Bush Amendment Bill be now read a first time. Uh, sir, it's my intention to nominate the Local Government and Environment Committee to consider the bill uh, over the next uh, uh, number of months. Mr Speaker, um, I need to declare straight away that this uh, piece of remnant bush and the very large house that uh, was once the family home of the first settlers on the plains, uh, the Dean's family, uh, is in my electorate. And between 1989 and 1996, uh, I was a member of the trust board that administers uh, that particular property. And between 1992 and 96, was chairman of that trust. Mr. Speaker, uh, this is a piece of legislation that dates back to 1914. Uh, when the Deans family decided that the last remaining remnant of native bush on the Canterbury Plains uh, at Rickerton uh, should be in public ownership, and so they gifted it uh, to the people of Christchurch at that time. And there was a uh, trust uh, arrangement set up to administer all of the necessary caretaking of that bush uh, that involved quite a large number of local authorities that existed in and around Christchurch at that time. Later, sir, 1947, the family decided that they would exit the large house on the property that had been built progressively from 1856 uh, through to the early 1900s, uh, and they sold the balance of the property to the Christchurch City Council, uh, the Heathcote Borough, the uh, Waimak, uh, sorry, Waimari County Council, uh, Heathcote uh, Borough and the uh, Paparoa County Council, as well as the Rickerton uh, Borough Council as well, uh, who at that stage had become the, uh, the trustees, if you like, of the property. I think it's fair to say, sir, that over the years the value of the bush was not as well recognised as it possibly could be. At one point it was the policy of the caretaker uh, to in fact mow all of the undergrowth from one side of the bush to the other so that you could look uh, beyond the, the tree stumps uh, from one side of the 15 acres to the other. Uh, that, sir, is clearly uh, not the sort of way in which uh, uh, the, the bush should be looked after. And in recent years, uh, particularly with the uh, uh, Royal Society putting onto the Trust Board, and I say recent years, in the last 30, 35 years, Dr Brian Malloy, uh, the stewardship of the bush has changed considerably and it is now in a much more natural state uh, and far more natural than it has been probably since uh, the, the mid 1800s um, or sorry the, the mid part of the the latter part of 1800s uh, in recent years sir a predator fence has been put around the outside of that uh, and that has facilitated the uh, number of native species being able to regenerate themselves inside that particular part of Christchurch. So it is one of the hidden gems of the city uh, and very, very valuable, not for its uh, particular monetary value, but for its um, uh, intrinsic value as being a, such a, an important remnant of what, what once covered a greater part of the Canterbury Plains. The house itself was interesting. Um, it's been renovated to about the 1900 uh, style, uh, but if you go back to 1990, um, the City Council at that stage was considering what its future uh, might be. I think uh, Dennis O'Rourke, uh, New Zealand First Member, was probably on the Council at that time. And uh, there was a decision made that it should be uh, subject to a, uh, a, a management plan and that restoration should be carried out uh, on the House. And uh, one of the quirks of the 1947 Act uh, was that there was the ability for the participants or the trust itself to uh, levy the contributing counties a percentage of the rate base uh, to fund their activities. And uh, by the time we got to 1990, immediately after amalgamation, with just the one local authority, now the, uh, the contributor, uh, the potential for payment through the formula was quite considerable. So the council at that stage 
uh, struck what I think was a very sensible arrangement in continuing to fund its operations with a view to that funding renovating the property. So a new roof was put on uh, with uh, uh, Canadian shingles, which was the original, most of the original type of roof. Uh, a full sprinkler system was put inside. Uh, there was earthquake strengthening put into all of the chimneys and all of the fireplaces were kept operational, although only two of them are uh, actually used these days under current air consent uh, policy. But the point is, sir, having um, used, having uh, uh, done all that work, this house, while it has suffered some damage, has come through the recent earthquakes extremely well. So what we see today is uh, the Trust Board in conjunction with the Christchurch City Council working out what do we need as a piece of legislation to guide us uh, through the next uh, long period of the, the history of the uh, property. Uh, it does recognise, I think, the value that Christchurch can see in that property. I'm very proud to say it is a heritage building uh, and, uh, and uh, will continue to be a very important part of the fabric. But it is the bush to it, it is the true uh, gem, if you like, uh, that the, uh, the Act is setting out to protect. So I'm very delighted to be able to uh, move this bill uh, to its uh, first reading today. I'm sure that um, some of the history that goes around this uh, particular part of Christchurch will interest the Select Committee as they go about their work. Uh, and it's appropriate that it does go to local government and environment because the local government uh, side of this is very, very evident in a positive way. Uh, and then the environmental protection that is uh, afforded to the bush will be of interest to those in the committee who take that particular uh, interest on board. Mr Speaker, I look forward to the Select Committee uh, going about its deliberations in a uh, timely manner and its return to the House in ultimate passage. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member 